Welcome back to the Grow Your Nutrition Business Podcast. At Healthy Steps Nutrition, we believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated, which is why we focus on a simple habit-based approach when working with clients. We know that helping clients become the healthiest versions of themselves isn't just about telling them what to eat. You have to look at support system, stress, mindset, sleep, exercise, lifestyle, and of course, nutrition to help someone become the healthiest version of themselves. We help gym owners and coaches build successful nutrition programs in-house without reinventing the wheel. I'm your host, Nicole Coyne, registered dietitian and founder of Healthy Steps Nutrition, CrossFit HSN, and HSN Mentoring. I'm also the author of The Basics of Nutrition Coaching, CrossFit Preferred Nutrition Course. I'm going to teach you how to take one step at a time to build a successful nutrition program where you finally feel confident talking about nutrition to your members and your communities. Today's guest is our longest standing mentor and chief of staff, Lindsay McDonald. She was actually the nutrition coach of one of the first gyms who launched their nutrition program using HSN back in 2016. She did so well that I thought, man, I need her on my team, and I am so thankful that she decided to join Team HSN. She has helped almost every single gym launch their nutrition program, and she's the main point of contact for gym owners as they're going through training for HSN mentoring. Let's just say she's a rock star. In today's episode, we talk about one of the most important considerations when revamping your nutrition program in a gym and some of the best practices so that hopefully it saves you time if you are looking to build a nutrition program before the new year. Lindsay heads up part of the sales training when onboarding new gyms, specifically the free intro role play call. That's right. We love role playing because it helps you feel more confident when you're actually talking to new leads or even clients. This has been a huge value add for gyms going through training and gyms who've added an additional mentoring call to specifically practice this piece of the puzzle. We will get to this episode right after this message. I have to give a shout out to our amazing mentoring clients. Last week, someone in the CrossFit Affiliate Owners Facebook group asked about nutrition coaching programs because they're looking to do something before the new year. It's smart. Right now is the time to be thinking about building a nutrition program before the new year because it's going to take some time. Our amazing mentor and client said some really incredible things about HSN and how we've helped them build a professional coaching program. I want to read you a few of the comments. Tracy, the owner of Big Lit CrossFit said, you should reach out to growyournutritionbusiness.com. Reinventing the wheel is tough and time consuming. There's a lot of different businesses that do this, but we use HSN and I'm so happy to answer any specific questions that you have and how they've helped us grow a nutrition business in our gym. Sherman, the owner of Dynasty CrossFit says, Nicole, if you are trying to build a profitable nutrition service in your gym, Nick from Shark Bite said, save yourself so much time, money, and effort and hit up Nicole and the team at Grow Your Nutrition Business. Stacy, a longtime affiliate owner of CrossFit Cleveland said, I work with Nicole in Healthy Steps Nutrition. Highly recommend working with them. Changing the face of my business on so many levels. I opened my gym in 2007. Wish I had been doing this since the beginning. I think that's a common theme with gyms that we work with that have been around for so long. Everyone knows that nutrition is the missing piece of the puzzle and the piece that drives your client's results so much faster, but it's overwhelming to build a nutrition program. Listen, I'm a gym owner who's passionate about helping other gym owners. We understand how to build a nutrition program in our gym because we've done it. We started as a nutrition program first and then expanded to our CrossFit gym. Since starting this program, we've helped over 700 gyms build nutrition programs. I'm not talking about fluff. We have practical, simple tips to help you revamp your business so that you make nutrition the foundation. Last week, we actually hosted a free webinar to introduce the first two pillars of the Healthy Steps Nutrition Framework and get into some practical tips to help you build a nutrition program in your gym. I, in this webinar, I talked about how to structure nutrition programs so that you have a nutrition only offering, maybe for past members or people who are not interested in your gym and how to build a hybrid package where people get started with nutrition, fitness, and accountability. 
We also talked about how to build nutrition into your brand. This is so, so important. Last week, or maybe it was a couple weeks ago now, we had someone reach out to us to join our gym. She went to a gym that was super close to us, but she um, stopped because she had surgery. And when she wanted to come back to CrossFit, she knew she wanted help with nutrition. She didn't go back to her original gym. She came to our gym because she knew we offered nutrition, fitness, and accountability. Guess what? She's getting started with all of those things, and she's already seeing some really, really awesome results. So... If you are looking for some help, I highly recommend that you click the link in the show notes and you can download instant access to this webinar recording. We had over 200 people register for this webinar and within 24 hours of us releasing the recording, there were already 100 people that had downloaded it. Let's just say gym owners are finally thinking, I need help with nutrition. Now is the time to build a nutrition program in your gym. Well, let's get to this episode on some of the best practices that you need to be thinking about when revamping a nutrition program before the new year in your gym. Enjoy. Lindsay, welcome back to the Grow Your Nutrition Business podcast. Hi, Nicole. Thanks for having me. I'm super pumped to talk all things planning for 2022 today because you are the expert in helping gyms launch and relaunch nutrition programs. Yeah, this will be probably my fifth year as a mentor, at least I would say, time flies by, where this is the most exciting time of year where people are starting to think about January 1, um, what they, how they want to launch, what they want to be offering to their membership. And I think that excitement, it, it really started Monday, November 1st. It's like, okay, here we go. End of the year is looming. What are we going to plan for January? So I have to tell you, I don't know that you know this yet, but two people we haven't talked to in a long time that have been clients of ours. Um, I have calls with both of them today. I am so excited because we sent an email out to everyone that was like, now is the time to revamp your nutrition program. Let's go. And people are excited. You're right. And you know what? We all know that there's going to be a rush of people who are going to be Googling weight loss in their area and nutrition support, nutrition coaching, gym near me um, in January. And we want to make sure that every gym using HSN and even gyms that just have listened to this podcast are setting themselves up for success to be able to support their communities and build a profitable and sustainable business at the end of the day. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And now is the time and people tend to think that January 1st is the time, but a lot of people have made their choices at, on January 1st. So they need to know that you are a viable option, that you are the best solution before that date. So now is the time to plan what you're going to execute as of January and then really start to market it so that people can see how awesome you are and what their options are and really nail that down so they have a plan as of January one. You know, so many gyms will launch a nutrition challenge, which I would recommend launching mid-January. We never recommend launching a challenge on on the first. Like people are still traveling. They've overspent on the holidays. And mid-January tends to be the, the best time to launch a nutrition challenge. But you need to be able to have something to support people after that challenge and something to support people individually who don't want a challenge. And that's really what your goal is with the first mentoring call for for mentoring, right? It's like, all right, what is your intake process look like? What are the packages that you're going to offer? Are you launching with a challenge? Are you launching with individual coaching? What is that going to look like for your community to easily integrate nutrition coaching into what the business is already doing? Yeah, I think it's really taking a look at people are individuals and, you know, what's going to motivate them and get them to where they need to be. And a challenge is a great option, but it's not going to be the best fit for every single person. You're going to have people that want to start that one on one experience right from day one. And I truly believe in the last 18, 19 months, I believe that people are taking better notice or they're being more aware as to how they need to improve their health and wellness. And so the need and the want is there. Um, So making sure that you do have a great launch strategy, making sure that your front end offer is, is sound and that everybody on staff is on board with what that offer looks like. You just said two things that I want to draw attention to your front end offer is sound. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? means that you are clear as to the best prescription or the best route of entry that is going to get most people to where they need to be. What is that one client journey? 
Typically, it's going to be fitness and nutrition. And that nutrition piece is that one-on-one accountability with your coach on site. So making sure that you're clear as to what that journey looks like and that you are presenting that during that free intro. I think that's the the struggle that so many gyms have, right? They've got, they just want to make a sale. They want people to come in and get started with fitness and they'll talk about nutrition later. When we know people are coming to your gym to get healthy, they want to change their body composition. They want to lose weight. And if you can guide them and be confident that your, your front end offer that encompasses nutrition, fitness, and accountability, if that is the one option you guide people to, that's what they will sign they will sign up with. Lindsay, one of the things that we added um, to the training recently, which I think is your favorite call probably, I, I'm mm-hmm. guessing, is, I know what you're gonna say. Yeah. is the free intro call. Like, yeah. what does that look like? And what are some of the things that, that have been eye-opening for gyms that do this free intro call and eye-opening for you? Eye-opening for gyms, I'll attack that first. So it's probably two main themes. Number one, a lot of gyms or a lot of owners, coaches are realizing that they're doing the majority of the talking during the free intro and not letting that person that is there really be the highlight, really be the focus of that free intro. Um, That's number one. I would say number two is they are now realizing, so on that call, I assume the role of a member or wanting to be a member walking through the gym and they kind of take me through that whole free intro process. And what they're realizing is they can't offer me seven, eight, nine, different routes of entry because it's just not going to work. It's not going to be clear. And that's where my hesitations really, really shine, right? If I'm giving all of these options. So I think they're, I not, I think I know they're realizing number one, let me be the highlight of that appointment. And number two, they need to come with that one strong recommendation that they know. I may not know that I need it, but they know that I need it to get to where I want to be based on the goals that I have shared with them. So we actually had a conversation. I love all of that. Yes, a thousand percent agree to all what you just said. Uh, We had a conversation with with some of our team on Monday and we were talking about this specific scenario where, you know, you've got gyms that have like four different levels of on-ramp and then you've got like a bunch of different options for classes and then you've got nutrition that you want to add in there and personal training and it's like, super confusing to talk about. Like I'm, my head is spinning thinking about how the heck are you going to present this option? And you brought up a really great example with Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. So Charlie is three. Um, and if I told her, you know, go upstairs and get dressed, we have to go to school today. We would not make it to school on time. We would probably not make it to school ever because she would be upstairs trying to make the decision. Do I wear a swimsuit or do I wear a ballet costume? So instead, um, two outfits are laid out and she picks. So therefore, she does have a sense of control. Um, But I assume myself as the expert because I'm her parent and I am the expert. And here are your options, number one or number two. And especially now, I want gyms to think about They're fighting against all of these marketing strategies, ads online for all of these options come January 1. So you're already fighting against all of that information. So when somebody picks you and comes through your doors because they trust you, because they see that social proof, they come through your doors and then you again present them with five, six, seven different options, it doesn't necessarily assert you as the expert. You're not telling them you know what they need to do to get to where they want to be. So cut through all that noise and present to them the answer that they need. I love that. And we help them. We navigate that call. So there's a role play call. Jim's yeah. after you do that role play call, I'm thinking about Mark, um, like comes right off the bat and he switched his free intro and yeah. he is signing people up for nutrition, fitness, and accountability before even launching his nutrition program, which yeah. they're almost done with the training. I looked it up last night. I saw that they had booked the last training call. I'm like, this guy just signed up a month ago and he's wrapping up training right now. He is so excited to to be getting yeah. up and going. But that's that's the reality of what happens after this call, right? Like people are confident. They've role played with you and they start implementing all of this stuff right away and getting people signed up for nutrition, fitness, and accountability before actually even launching their program. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. And, and think about like the value of being able to just practice that first experience, kind of work out any hesitations or any kind of obstacles on that call, and then really put it into action. And then one person signs up on that transformation 
And imagine they get so much confidence from having that conversation that the next one is led even, even more confidently and so forth. I think it's, it's just absolutely amazing. And to have that wait list, they have, I think seven or eight people, seven or eight people on -on one-on-one packages, just waiting to get started, which I think is phenomenal and really speaks to how well they've been leading those free intros. I love it. And how confident they are because they know it's going to work. They've been role playing with you. And, you know, the role play call is really important in the conversation, but we also have that template that helps them be able to clearly deliver the information that's not just a sales binder. It's, hey, here's the transformations. Here's how we can help you. Here's how we've helped other people. Here's Google reviews. Like there's so many pieces of the puzzle to give these gyms the confidence so that people understand you can help me through nutrition, fitness, and accountability, not just fitness. Yeah. It's really telling the story as to how they can help support someone's dream and how they can get them to where they want to be. And as they start to grow and can, you know, put in those visuals, it's, it's really powerful. And it really, it's not a sales conversation at that point whatsoever. It's, you are exactly like say Linda, Linda came in here like a year ago. This is what she was able to do with our coach. And her actual story is being highlighted in that pricing binder. And this new person can see that and they can read that. And I think it's it's super impactful. I was talking to Patty, one of our, our mentors, and he, mm-hmm. uh, you know, one of the trends that we're kind of pushing every gym to do follows Portside, Melinda's gym, and make this yep. big wall of success. And he put the wall of success behind him in mm-hmm. his office, right? Which... I would have never thought to do this, but I think it's genius. So basically if I'm talking, if I'm the new person that's coming in and mm-hmm. you are the, you are the coach at the gym, I'm looking at you, but then behind you is all of these walls of all, all of these pictures and testimonials and like before and afters and like all of these amazing things of people in their community. He said that all these people are signing up for nutrition, fitness, and accountability, which they were before, but now they're saying, I'm going to be the next person on that wall. Yeah. Like how yeah freaking motivating is that for people to see other people that have done awesome? Because, you know, I think when we go into a business, we're nervous. Is this going to work for me? Right? Like, are they just telling me that they can help me, but can they truly help me? And if you have social proof, if you have proof of other people that are just like me that you've helped, I'm going to go into this so much more confident that you can help me and fully trust and just dive into what you are telling me to do because you've already helped people just like me. I, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I think for a lot of people, it can be a big step to even walk inside these gyms, right? I remember when I hosted the the new you program six or seven years ago, I had this one lady, Alana, and it took her two hours to come into the gym. She just kept circling. I could see her outside. She just kept circling because she she thought – as she shared later on, this place just isn't for me, just looking at the outside. And imagine coming in, and back then I I wouldn't have those pictures on the wall, but if she came in and she saw those and she could see someone that she saw herself in, right, then that's going to tell her this is a place for me, they can help me. And then you're right, then she's going to want to be on that wall herself. Absolutely. I love that. We're spending a lot of time on the intake process and like Uh really diving into this because we know this is the best way to grow a nutrition program in a gym. Like you don't want to resell people later. You want to get new people started with nutrition, fitness, and accountability, then highlight the heck out of those people. And eventually your other existing members will come in and, and want to do the same thing. They'll, they'll understand Um, but this is what you really need to do. And the cool thing is, is these gyms that are going through training now, and even the ones just listening to this podcast and are like, okay, I'm going to start implementing this stuff. You've got two months to practice before January. Like don't wait till January to switch this stuff around, like start practicing now so that when January comes, you are so confident that you can help all these people and every single person get started with nutrition, fitness, and accountability. And truly like, that's what we're seeing with a lot of gyms. Over 75% of these these new members coming on board are getting started with nutrition, fitness, and accountability when they're using the new sales binder and they are doing the free intro call with you. It, it's as Mark from Clamtown said in quotes, it's magic. Yeah. And it, and it is. And the thing is, people are going to be wanting that. They are going to be needing that. And I don't want them to go elsewhere for it. You know, if you have that passion, I think then being able to come to you for that holistic approach is exactly what they need. You know, it's interesting. We've been traveling to quite a few gyms recently and 
You know, I'm hearing the same thing over and over from gym owners that are doing this well. And they're going back and saying, you know, the value of this program is me being able to deepen my relationships with my clients and truly be invested in their journey. And what happens when you do this and help these people see so so much incredible results is you're deepening the connections, but then they're referring more people to you, right? Because you, you are the place of wellness for them and they associate all of the help, whether it be nutrition, fitness, accountability, feeling better, more energy, they're going to guide people to you. And that's what these gyms that we're talking to in person, it's, it's the same theme. Because of this program, I'm able to deepen my connections, deepen my relationship, help my people more, which is really why I opened my business in the first place. Yeah. I think I I know that nobody has a member's best interest at heart more than the people that work there. And I think being able to work with someone one-on-one for nutrition, but then also see them Monday morning class at 6 a.m. And, you know, hey, how you doing? How was your weekend? I think that really adds a lot of value. And this is the business of relationships. And that's what people are are loving about it and keeping people motivated for the long term. I think a lot of people associate nutrition coaching or even when they like first start hearing about us, like, oh, it's, it's nutrition. I'm going to give someone a meal plan. Like that's the opposite of what you're doing, right? You're, Mm -hmm. you're there to support them using a holistic approach, helping them identify the, the people that, that are going to support them beyond you and their journey, helping them identify how they're going to manage stress and not just go to food, helping them create a healthy lifestyle. And all of those individual meetings are helping you do that with that person. So I want everyone to kind of shift their mindset, like nutrition coaching, habit-based coaching is a lifestyle and isn't, you shouldn't be pigeonholing yourself into just nutrition. Like there's so many other aspects that are related to this to help someone become the healthiest version of themselves. Absolutely. I mean, last year, I would say the majority of my clients were not looking for um, advice that was specific to what they were eating. It was more about stress management. It was about healthier sleep habits. It was about getting outside during lockdown in the winter. You know, how can they improve their overall quality of life? And I know that people value having a coach, especially in terms of a fitness coach. So I look at it as why, like, how can you not want a coach for the other 23 hours of your day? I love that. So we've dove into the intake process. We dove into like, what does it really look like? High level overview, challenge, launch support. I will link in the show notes, all of the challenge specific related things, but what are some big takeaways? You just helped us run an employee wellness challenge um, at Delbrook and Mm -hmm. these people saw incredible results. What are some of the things that you can just high level overview with helping people run a more successful challenge? Yeah, you definitely want to look at your timing of your challenge. As you as you said, not starting January 1st, you need people to kind of acclimate to the new year. Kids go back to school, go back to work, maybe pay off their visa bill from the <laughs> holidays. Um, and you also have to keep in mind that you're going to be measuring people ahead of time. So you want to give yourself a little bit of a buffer um, in that way. So typically mid-January would be a really good start time. Um, You want to think about pricing as well, because you want to make sure that it's higher than your ongoing coaching rate to really offer that value. And it's going to reflect how much one-on-one time you do have with those individuals as well. So if it's a six week and have a midpoint um, reach out, then that's going to impact your price point. You want to think about potentially capping your challenge as well. Um, There's going to be a lot of interest come January, depending on how many people you have on staff that are helping run that challenge. That's going to be a big factor. All of these details can definitely be be ironed out on a mentoring call um, during this month for sure. But those would be the main things that I would think about and as well as a theme and you know your audience best. So what's going to motivate them? What's going to keep them pushing forward and what's going to keep them motivated to working with you beyond that challenge? Because we know that we can't solve, we can't guide people to all of their goals within four to six weeks right? We need to really market that as a starting point, a really great opportunity to, to lay down some great routines and habits and then move them into one-on, one-on-one coaching after that event. I love that. You and I just actually hosted an interactive training. You know how much we love these interactive <laughs> role play trainings um, oh, for yeah. mentoring. And the one that we recently did was on 
converting people to ongoing coaching after the challenge is over. And we role played with someone and, and helped mm-hmm. them get really comfortable with the conversation. That's something that you, all the mentors do with Jim's launching challenges. I actually did it yesterday on a mentoring call with Allied Health, a physical therapy facility that's wrapping up their challenge. We set a goal of how many people we wanted converted over to ongoing coaching. So they have a target that they want to hit. And then we role played that conversation. And I think some of the things that I you know, really draw attention to is highlighting how far they've come, but where do they want to go and build yourself yeah. into that plan? What are some things that you would say to people who don't do a final in-person meeting uh, or are looking to convert people to ongoing coaching? Yeah. Number one, you need to have those appointments full because you can't have someone move to one-on-one coaching unless you have that one-on-one conversation. Um, so number one, that needs to be done and do that when you have their initial meeting. I think drawing attention to what they loved about the challenge is, is, a, is a really good point too, because if I have someone and what they love the most is the app, then I'm going to be talking about the app and how it's so integral in that one-on-one coaching experience and they love it. Great. We're actually going to be using it more during your one-on-one experience. So highlighting what they love and moving that into your one-on-one coaching program, as you said, like with their goals. A big thing is when you meet with people initially is not only to set what they want to accomplish within the challenge, because that's not going to get them to their overall goal. I'd like to hear what is your three month goal? What is your six month goal? When I see you in the gym in January of 2023, where do you want to be at that point? Because I plan to be with you that long. I hope, I hope you're excited too, because I certainly am. So they've lost four or five pounds in in that challenge, that's great. But their goal is to lose 30. Awesome. We're definitely going to get you the rest of the way. And here's how we're going to do it with one-on-one coaching. I love that. And when you role play those conversations, you go into the real conversation so much more confident that you can yeah. navigate the obstacles because let's be honest, Lynn, you and I have heard every obstacle under the sun of why someone should not every. do it. And we can navigate those conversations with anyone. Yeah. Yeah. I think, What I love the most about role play feedback is, okay, Lindsay, so we work through some hesitations in, in the role play. So when I went into speaking to my challenge members, I actually uh, talked about that hesitation before it became a hesitation. So they're actually talking about that before, um, as opposed to having that member hesitate and then having to kind of circle back and figure out how, how to get around that. So a big one would be, Price point, I think, is what we hear a lot, right? Well, I can't, I can't afford it. Talking about maybe what they spend um, in their week on miscellaneous items such as Starbucks, uh, things like that, and really figuring out a plan on how they can afford that ongoing coaching because they they know that they want to put money, they want to invest in their health and wellness. So again, drawing attention to that before it becomes a hesitation has been super useful. I love it. Linz, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. You know, we talked a lot about intake. We talked a lot about ongoing coaching, why it's important, challenge, high level overview. Another mm-hmm. huge thing is staffing, which I think we'll have you on a podcast at, at another time because getting your staff on the same page with your program is vital to the success. Either way, you need to think Mm -hmm. about now what your launch is going to look like in January and plan it out because we know that it takes a while for people to take action, right? So if you're planning to launch a challenge in middle of January, December needs to be when you start marketing that challenge, right? So, you know, we want to help gyms set their programs up for success, which is the reason why, you know, every gym that's signing up right now is is going through the training, getting up with individual coaching, launching a challenge mid-January, but they're going to be advertising that challenge in December, yeah, it's right, it's, it's right around the corner. I think it always takes people by surprise. So let's plan now, let's market next month, and then let's execute and really start helping some people. I, I can't wait. It's an exciting time of year. I love it. Lindsay, thank you for all that you do. I could not imagine this program without you and all of your support. I would not like to be anywhere else. This is where I, I love to be. So thank you for having me on the podcast, Nicole. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Lindsay. One actionable tip that I would highly recommend that you do is role play the free intro with your staff. Whoever is doing the free intro process in your gym, 
go through the process that you're doing. Do you have a structured process for asking people questions when you first meet them to really find out about their goals, their why, and guiding them to the best option to help them reach their goals? The next thing I would recommend that you do is have a staff meeting. It is vital that your staff is on the same page. You have to communicate the same message because if you don't, you're going to confuse your clients and you are going to lose them. I would also look into your social media. Whoever runs your social media, are you communicating that message consistently? Is it really obvious when people go to your social media that you offer nutrition, fitness, and accountability? What about people on your email list? Are you emailing them consistently talking about nutrition, fitness, and accountability? People have to hear things 1 million times before they take action. And if you're not talking about nutrition, fitness, and accountability consistently, it is going to be tough for them to associate all three of those pieces of the puzzle with your brand. We know this is time consuming at HSN Mentoring, which is why we give our clients social media tips, video scripts, email content, everything that they need to keep nutrition a consistent part of their message. Of course, you can reinvent the wheel and do all of that yourself or just use all of our stuff that's included every single month with your mentoring subscription. If you're looking to save time and not reinvent the wheel when building a nutrition program, I would love to help you. Click the link in the show notes and you can get instant access to that free training that we hosted last week on the first two pillars of the HSN mentoring framework on how to structure and how to build nutrition into your brand. You can also find out a little bit more about how HSN mentoring works, what the investment looks like, and you can book a free call with me so that I can show you the platform and answer any specific questions that you have. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Please don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll see you back here next week.